Robert Fritz's Structural Consulting Channel. What this is, we present full structural consultations, ones that change people's lives. The idea behind this channel is for you to witness a completely different understanding of the human condition. Here are a few things to know. Structural consulting is not therapy. It is an exploration of the underlying structures in the client's life that produces predictable patterns of behavior. What is structure? Structure is a combination of elements that impact each other. In these sessions, the client's structures are a combination of what they want to create, how reality actually is, and the various concepts that they have. The concepts clients have are usually hidden from them but these concepts have impact in influencing the client's life patterns. A change of structure will cause a change of the client's patterns. The principle, the underlying structure of anything will determine its behavior. The process involves seeing the actual patterns in the client's life, which leads to a better understanding of the client's underlying structure. The sessions last between one or two hours. We suggest that if you do decide to watch them, do so when you have time to see the entire process. If you want to see more structure consultations, subscribe to the channel. And here is the session. Okay, what would you like to talk about? My creative blocks. What, what uh, do you mean by creative blocks? Uh, something that uh, stops me from um, preparing, possibly, but finishing, definitely. Um, getting very stuck sometimes in the infrastructure, the building, the collecting materials or putting aside a time. Um, what is it that you uh, create? Uh, in my, I'm uh, a dressmaker from a long time ago, since a young age, and I have been involved up until the last 25 years when I've been single parenting with jobs that were design related, clothing related. Um, and in, on and off since becoming a parent, I have designed really sort of several lines of clothing that I never really followed through with um, in hopes of um, marketing them. And- So let me get this straight though, you did create them. I created up to a point. I created the concept, I created the drawings, I, um, Specifically, with a line of children's wear, I um, got a tax ID number. I registered my name. Um, mm -hmm. I've had a logo going. Um, had uh, collected, you know, some, you know, fabric samples. Had um, got my ideas together for uh, to put together samples. Yeah. Did you? But you never made the dresses. I never followed, no, I did not. Uh -huh. And some of it was- um, But you're, you're fully capable of making them, right? I am perfectly capable of doing them. Yeah. Are you in the, in the throes of this right now? Uh, not so specifically, except that I still want to uh, see my work. I want to put put work out there. I um, I still have lots of ideas. Um, so what happens when you point where you've got everything in place, but then you don't take the next step? I freeze up mostly around. Oh, this is going to be too. You know, I'm looking for perfection a lot of the time. Oh, I know what's going to go into it. I know it's going to take. 15 hours. Um, and I think in my aging, my focus has not 
been maintained quite as well. Um, there are more things that come into play. Um, it's, I'm not able to spend eight hours sitting down sewing, doing, staying with the project. Um, did, you know, did you know when you were developing the project that you get to the point where you needed to really bring it home? You're asking me, did I know that? Yeah, that, that you would actually have to sit down and sew the dresses. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what were you telling yourself while you were doing all the other things about the moment of truth that would come? I don't know what I was telling myself. Will you ask me the question again? Well, did you think you were going to pull it off? I did. Yeah. I did. So you knew you knew the amount of work that it would take was coming. Mm, probably <laughs> not. Probably not. What did probably you I I don't think I realized how how much at that at a certain point I would need concentrated time that it wasn't something up okay. to that point I was work I was only really putting one day a week to it which is all I could um, okay and so I, I didn't plan for that all right so here's what you're describing mm -hmm. you're describing with the amount of time you had you got everything set up to bring it to the next step, to bring it to the next step, to mm. bring it to the next step. And then you got to a point when you realized that it would be a dedicated effort to mm -hmm. finish the project. And then you decided not to do it. Mm -hmm. That's not creative block. What nice if, if you could call it creative block, it's nice because then you then you don't have to take responsibility for it. You know, <laughs> there's something in you that's really stopping you. There's nothing in you that's stopping you. You just looked at the amount of work it would take and you said no. Hmm. Isn't that really what happened? Yeah, it did. Yeah. I mean, you can't romanticize it so much as saying, oh God, there's something in me that blocked me from doing it what you just decided, you actually made a decision, you made a choice. Hmm. Looking at what it would take to really move to the next step. <clears throat> now, maybe that was a good choice, maybe it was not a good choice, but it certainly was a choice you made. Hmm. Is that right? It is, you're right. Why, why, do you, why did you call it creative block? Because it's still with me, there's still desire there. I know. Um, it, it, no, it, but just understand, just, it's still going to take that amount of work. Unless you hire somebody to do it for you. Right. Which would be great. Because then you don't have to do the amount of work. <laughs> right. But at this point, if you don't have somebody you can hire to do that, it's up to you. And you still don't want to put that much effort into it, even though you would like it to be done. You know what Dorothy Parker said? She said, I like having, ri having written. Right. She didn't like the writing itself, but she liked the <laughs> results. And uh, you're kind of at that point where it's up to you whether or not you engage in it to the degree it demands. I still feel like there's something that I'm afraid of in finishing it or bringing it to okay. completion. And maybe you those agree. that's why the creative, the word creative block come up yeah, because okay. there's, I'm not afraid of hard work. Um, it would take a lot of organization and commitment. That's true. Um, so what are you afraid of if you pulled it off? What do you suspect would, would happen? Um, that it might fail. I mean, there's that possibility. And what's wrong with that? Mm, 
probably not a lot wrong with it. Just the I, just that. just the just the idea of having um, taken the time to do something that didn't work out, and it would be a a, an inve a large investment of time and energy. Well, it would be a large investment of time and energy that, as it turned out, you did the best you could, and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So what? No, what, what I'm not trying to tell you is you shouldn't think, so what? What I'm asking you is to compare reality against your concept of reality so we can study the concept. Okay. Do you always have this about failure? Um, I have a, a panic around time and what I put my attention on. That, okay. What, why do that you... something really valuable is going to get lost, that I could be doing something else that, that yeah, I see. maybe wouldn't be a failure. I, maybe that's what I'm looking for, but um, so you must spend a lot of your time second guess, guessing yourself. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Two roads diverged in the yellow wood. <laughs> and long I looked down one, <laughs> but took the other one. And you know, at the end of that poem, people misunderstand that poem. Because in the poem, what Frost says is they were both equal. And what he did, though, he wrote this poem for a friend of his, who if he went this way, he would be complaining that he didn't go that way. If he went that way, he'd be complaining he didn't go this way. So actually, Frost wrote it mm. for a friend of his because at the end of the poem, I'll, you know, he's going to complain that he should have taken the other road, even though he took this one. A great backstory. Of course, of course, people completely misunderstand the, the mm. that poem, but he's really describing a phenomenon that people mm. have, that you have. Why do you? Why are you so, so concerned with wasting your time or spending your time incorrectly that you could have spent it better with something else? Why? Why do you think in those terms? I like productivity. I like. Um, so doesn't answer the question. Though. Ask me the question again. Question is, why do you think in the terms of wanting to make sure you're spending your time on the right things and not the wrong things? Because I care about uh, the outcome. I want to have the right outcome versus a not good outcome. Well, in a way, though, that can't be true, because if you really cared about the outcome, you'd create it. And then see how you felt about it. Hmm. And you wouldn't be speculating that while you're involved in one thing, that maybe you should be doing this other thing. I'll tell you what, let me um, see if I can do your pattern. But uh, the story that you sent me was really rather, well, first of all, it wasn't really complete. As you said, because you still have ambition. And mm -hmm. the story's not really over. Can you think of a time when you set out for something, you had it for a while, but then at the end of the story, you no longer had it and it's not a good ending? I really struggled with it, Robert, mostly because, I, you know, it... it um... I mean, I've had relationships and raising a child and expectations. Um, jobs. But that's not the same. Jobs. Jobs. Um, hmm. 
Well, I've never lost a job if that's would have been the. Well, you may have quit. Um, projects. It would more apply to projects. Okay. Um, well, well and, you know, I can I can say this. Let's let's just you know I started the Creator Tools in January, and it was difficult for me. Why? Because uh, the the I need to write down things um, a lot. Why? And. I don't know. I guess I believe that I'm, it's going to anchor in my brain better, or there's some kinesthetic thing about writing stuff down while I'm hearing it. Um, okay. So, so you don't trust yourself to really have the wherewithal to, to see things through. Right. I think that's it. Hmm. And so you have... Uh, basically created a compensating strategy mm -hmm. to try to make sure you don't misbehave. <laughs> or make it look like I'm, <laughs> it's, it's true. Yeah. Now I will share something that is maybe not appropriate, but it does feel different in that I have um, recently decided that I wanted to study poetry. And mm -hmm. I'm able to sit down and write for 45 minutes every day and read poetry every day without any um, uh, fear and any um, uh, hesitation. Right. So, so much for uh, your claim of creative block, huh? Say that again. So much for your claim of creative right. Block. Right. Okay. Well, so what's the difference between that and making a dress? Well, that's. Uh, I, it would be nice to know that. I think some of I it is that, that. By the way, mm -hmm. I know that. Well, it's really simple. When you're studying poetry, you don't have the same kind of. Um, identity investment that right. you do making a dress. Yeah, sure. Not that hard to see. But... <laughs> right. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> no, I get it. I know it. Yeah. yeah. I put a lot of pressure on myself when I make a dress. Mm. Because I know what goes into doing it right. And maybe no, that's... It's not, about, it's not about knowing what goes into doing it right. It can't be about that. Because if you, if that were the pressure, you would, you would be objective about it, not subjective about it. Hmm. You know what it takes, you decide whether or not you want to do it. And if you decided to do it, you would take the strategic secondary choices on, mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. of creating mm -hmm. the dress. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have your identity at stake it wouldn't be an existential crisis right so what would you think if you had made a dress that turned out not well i've done it and what did you say to yourself mm. I think when I was younger, it didn't matter so much to me. Now it feels like it matters more. And what is it that matters? What, why, why is it matter? Probably my identity. You know, yeah, what, but what is it that you say about your identity when that happens or when even the thought of that happens? That I'm not good enough, that I'm, I don't measure up. Okay. All right, so what we're looking at is when we get to that point where you're making the decision whether or not to spend the hours we'll take to finish mm -hmm. the project. Because you said two things about that. One is the, uh, it, one was the logistics of that. 
mm-hmm. how much time and how much time you had and what it takes and so on. But the other was, you said, the uh, fear of not completing it or completing it and then having, having it not work. And one of those two, I mean, both are in play when you make your decision. One's a reasonable decision, whether or not you, you want to spend the time. Mm-hmm. And the other one is uh, based on a concept that you have, where you're measuring mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. against your success. Mm-hmm. And you're afraid that you won't live up to the, to the standard of measurement. Mm-hmm. What's your ideal about yourself? What, what are you supposed to be? How are you supposed to be? I'm good at what I do. Why? Um, sometimes there's a lot of joy in the result. That's not uh, the meaning. That's the kind mm. of the and you, you know, one of the things we're going to do is separate out consequences on the one hand, okay. um, what it means to you on the other. What does it mean to me to do these because things? Because look, well? if you, yeah. if you, if you um, made the dress and you had joy because it turned out well, okay, that's nice. If you didn't make it well, and you didn't have joy because it didn't turn out well, not the motivation for making the decision. Well, I do learn things along the way. That's the consequences of things. It's okay. not the meaning of it. Okay. We're after the meaning. And one of the things that helps us is by making a distinction between peripheral things mm-hmm. on the one hand, which you might include, I like the process, I don't like the process. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I feel happy, sometimes I feel sad. Sometimes I learn things that's useful, yeah. sometimes I don't. You, you know, all of that stuff is not consequential. Okay. But what is consequential is how you think, what it means in your life. Almost the symbolism of it in your life the way you hold it. Why is it important to you to be good at what you do? Why does that matter even? Well, here's another thought that, you know, I'm using, um, I'm using myself. I am, I am making use of myself, I guess. What what does it matter? What does that uh, at all matter? Um, well, I guess I think it matters that I, I am doing something. Why? Think the, because no, everybody no. else is doing something. <laughs> Here's what I'd like you to do is really think yeah. it through. Really think it through. Consider the question. Because in a way, you've never asked yourself this question. Uh, it's true. I haven't. You've assumed that you need to be of use. Right. And the question is, how come? somewhere i guess i believe that's what it is to be alive well i understand you are the, alive. the question doesn't have an answer really well it does have an answer the answer is either um for some reason or it's not true Well, my guess is that it's really not true. It doesn't really matter 
if it means something or doesn't mean something. It's not going to stop me from doing the next thing. Again, those are two different things. One is um, because you do things because you want to, because you really have a very strong dynamic urge to aspire to create mm -hmm. things. You're mm -hmm. a creator. You like to create things. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you place meaning on it in relationship to your purpose in life and that you're somehow living up to something or other. Mm. Notice as we're talking, what I'm always doing with you is making distinctions because I'll ask you a direct question and you'll mm -hmm. answer a different question, one that I didn't ask. <laughs> They're hard questions. They're not hard questions. What's going on is you have these assumptions you've made. Mm -hmm. and the assumptions you've made, this is the way structure works. They're trying to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be changed. Right. So when they're challenged, they almost have a survival instinct. <laughs> I can see them. And your mind kind of goes here. Yeah. So it, they don't get challenged. And this is just structural dynamics. It's just the way structure works. It's totally nothing personal. I'm sure. <laughs> I get the picture. Yeah. I do. And I've heard you say it over and over again. Okay. So is there anything in your life you have to do? No. Okay. The presumption is there's something in your life you do have to do, which is to live up to whatever that standard of purpose is. Yeah. You can create purposes. There's nothing wrong with creating purposes, but those, this is different because in this concept, it's an obligation, not a mm -hmm. choice. And so when you measure yourself against that concept and you don't live up to it, um, it creates pressure and stress on you and conflict. Very well illustrated, yes. Yeah. Take a look at your life and think about it for a moment from the standpoint of there's nothing you have to do at all, period. Hmm. Just, just imagine that for a moment. What are the various things you don't have to do? Take care of other people. Okay. Drive cars. Okay. Uh, Say one other thing. Make a dress. Make a dress. See, with the dress one, it's different than taking care of other people and driving a car because you have your identity tied up with your dressmaking, which incidentally, you don't have tied up with your poetry writing. Right. One is a different structure. You, the poetry writing is totally structural tension, right? End result, current reality. Maybe you do or don't know how to write a certain poem, mm -hmm. but you take the action, you learn whatever you need to learn. It comes right. out however right. it comes out. Right. You either like it or you don't. Right. And you do it every day. Right. And since you don't announce to the world that you're a poet, mm -hmm. but you do announce to the world that you're a <laughs> dress designer. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. So why, I mean, I would, I mean, maybe a word I would use is that the, that there's innocence oh, in a way to the poetry. Well, is that, you, say, you say innocence, you don't have it tied up with it. I don't what? 
have any bullshit tied up with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, you know, that's good. <laughs> I don't know if innocence is the right term. I think uh, cl uh, clarity of Maybe. reality and what yeah. you want. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no extracurricular agenda going on to prove anything about you and your life. Mm -hmm. So these two um, things that you have going on, one though is identity in relationship to, uh, I don't know what it exactly is, but let's, let me show you this. I know you probably know this from work you know of mine. So in the identity factor, there's some unwanted belief you have. And what you do is you create an ideal. Mm -hmm. oh, wait a second, let me start this again. You create an ideal of how you're supposed to be. And the ideal is designed to, to hide right. the actual belief you have about yourself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we understand what the belief is about yourself, you will no longer feel you have to live up to the ideal. Mm -hmm. Because this is called the ideal belief reality conflict because mm -hmm. there's reality. And sometimes you live up to the ideal and sometimes you don't, you live up to the unwanted belief. When you do the uh, unwanted belief thing, two things happen. One is you criticize yourself. You find it unacceptable, should have done the dress. Mm -hmm. Or you make it seem like a force beyond yourself, like so-called creative block. Mm -hmm. And maybe our job is to find out what the unwanted belief is. And you, you gave us lots of hints when you described the ideal of being incompetent and so on. Because often the opposite of the ideal is right. the belief. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff stuck in there, but. I bet there's not a lot of stuff stuck in there. I bet it's just, it doesn't work that way. There's only a few elements here. I know I mean, there isn't this really congested, unwanted belief pod in there. What the unwanted belief in is everything else sort of, all of the compensating strategies go away. Those are the. Conge that's the congestion. Well, it can seem like congestion, but it isn't from Con a structural point of view. There's only a few elements. It's not, okay. This is not Bach's fugue, <laughs> which is complicated. <laughs> this is really quite simple. Oh dear, okay. You think, you think something <laughs> about yourself you don't like. You create right. an ideal to compensate. Right. And you try to live up to the ideal. And as you do that, it evokes, emphasizes the unwanted belief. For example, mm -hmm. if you thought you were a coward, the idea would be to be brave. And then mm -hmm. you'd go off and you'd do hang gliding and, mm -hmm. and uh, swimming with the sharks to prove that you're not a coward. But the act itself reinforces the unwanted belief because who but a person who thought they were a coward would have to prove that they're brave. Now, in a way, the way you've described it, and this may not be correct, this might be in the ballpark, but not quite right there. But the way you've described it is that it's very important to you to be seen by yourself and others, I suppose, as being confident, mm -hmm. as having it together. 
So that points to a belief in which you don't have it together, you're incompetent. I think that's pretty accurate. Sorry? I'd say that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Very accurate. But you, you know, you see, you see how that would work, though, no matter how old you are, you carried that with you up to this right. point. Right. And what you've done all of these years is you've, you've tried to fight it. Fight the unwanted belief. And notice that with all the experiences that you've had of the successes that you have had, mm -hmm. it hasn't gone away. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. So I, maybe the belief is I'm incompetent. I don't, I'm not sure, but it kind of looks like that right now. Let's try it out. And what you're going to do is you're going to teach yourself what you actually think about yourself. So rather than fighting it, you're, and, and you're also not going to just accept it. Mm. You're going to say it and see if you actually think it's true. And to the point where you teach yourself this kind of reality, reality about this is what you think, um, and you really are fluent in your self-opinion, there's no future reason to try to hide it from yourself. But in the meantime, you still have aspirations, you still want things, you still have values. And you happen to think, that you're incompetent, independent of that you want certain things and will mm -hmm. develop certain competencies on behalf of those things, even if your basic belief about yourself yeah. is you're not capable of, of pulling it off. Hmm. Does it make sense? It does make sense. Okay. So say over and over to yourself and, and check it out. Don't just say it like a mantra. But say it and examine your life and see if it plays the way it plays and it, is it accurate in terms of what you've carried all these years. Mm. And the, the sentence would be, I'm incompetent. Mm. And say it out loud. I am incompetent. I am incompetent. I am incompetent. Now, does your mind go to all of the competent things you have done? Yes, it goes to all the things that I've done competently. Yeah, to, to prove. <laughs> yes. To discredit your belief about yourself because it's unwanted. So, and that's what happens in the ideal belief reality conflict. Mm. Uh, Uh, let me get my screen up here. Um, in order to uh, argue against the belief, what people do is they create um, experiences. Of the ideal, so that would be the coward. Well, come on. That would be the coward um, having all of these experiences of bravery. Mm. And so that's mm -hmm. where your mind went, went to argue against what you actually think. And it's remember, uh, this is a structural phenomena. It's not, you're not crazy. You're not anything other than in a structure, like a rocking chair, mm -hmm. that as you move towards success, the tension is from the concept, you know, look, searching, seek, mm -hmm. seek, well, uh, seeking equilibrium in the structure, which will move you away from the success. The point of most non-equilibrium and your pattern mm -hmm. is when you get to the point you've done everything and now it's time to make the dress. And that's the point of most non-equilibrium. Right. 
because of the concept. Mm. The point uh, of most equilibrium when you're writing poetry is when you've written the poem. It, it, you see, it's a different structure. Yeah. One's the real creative process, and the other is partly a creative process, but also simultaneously a structural process in which you're oscillating from moving toward success to moving away from success. Mm. Makes because you're good. afraid, you're, you, deep down inside, you're afraid that you'd show up as incompetent. Which for many people, it's no big deal. Yeah, I'm incompetent. So that would show me how to do it. Yeah. For you, it's a big deal. <laughs> because you think that somehow defines you. It's an identity matter. Really true. Okay. Really true. Really so, helpful. Really here's, true. Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to spend a little more time teaching yourself the, the concept of incompetent to the point where you no longer are hiding it from yourself. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go. <laughs> and am I saying it out loud? Yes, please. It's better if you say it out loud. Just so you know, it's better if you say it out loud because okay. it's almost forcing yourself, forcing your mind to get it. Right. I am incompetent. I am incompetent. I am incompetent. Now, when you start to write poetry, mm -hmm. because you haven't done it before, your level of competence does not come into the picture. Right. You're presuming that you only know whatever you know and can right. do whatever you can do. Right. In the meantime, you're, you're going after it and learning what you need to learn and trying things out. And sometimes it yeah. succeeds and sometimes it doesn't. And that's you in your own creative process in that structure. In a way, it's so good you have that as an example of when it's not... Uh, about you. It's really about writing right. the poetry you want to write. Right. How are you feeling right now? How are you thinking about things and looking at your life? Oh, how am I about what we're talking about now? Yeah. yeah. How are you thinking about things and how are you looking at your life and what's it like? Well, in this context, this is, you know, hugely helpful and accurate um, and makes such good sense. Um, in my life, uh, I have to say this writing of this poetry is just, it's kind of big. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's really kind of changed my life. Well, now, what if you did your whole life exactly that way? Yeah. So let's come to the dress mm -hmm. thing because mm -hmm. it's up to you whether or not you continue on with it. Because I, I know when you told when you sent me the story, you said it wasn't over because you're still thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Do you do you really? want to do it well you and understand you don't have to do it right and no matter what you think your level of competence is you can actually pull it off but it takes a lot of work and you may not be willing to do all the time it takes because you're busy doing other things and you mm -hmm. just think it's not worth that i know that it i know that it has always 
been a precious thing and that that is some of that uh, uh, kind of tension. Um, Only because you glorify it by making right, it of right. your confidence. Yes. And hey, I know that. I made this dress. Look at me. Aren't I? I know. I got it. it. I got it, Robert. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I'm asking the question now. Right. In light of, so it just becomes a logistical question. Right. Not an existential question. Exactly. Yeah. So now I got to figure out if I want to put that kind of time and energy and into yeah. doing this. And if it's if there's no symbolic value, mm -hmm. it really becomes like art for art's sake. It becomes the dress for the sake of the dress. Same as the poetry is for the sake of the poetry. Mm -hmm. It is for the outcome itself and not because it has a subtext. It's not justifying anything. Right. justifying a wrong idea about myself. Well, okay. hide, hiding it from yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no matter what you think about yourself, you still want good things. Right. You want good relationships. You want good health. You want productive work. Independent of how you think about yourself. Right. What happens in terms of a change of underlying structure? Let's say we have a tripod. We take away one of the legs and the structure then behaves differently. The leg doesn't disappear. It's just not in the structure. Mm. So the concept doesn't disappear. It's simply not in the structure. Mm. And does it... Is one aware of it? Sometimes, sure. Well, of course. How are you going to forget? <laughs> but if you really get this, you say, you might say to yourself, for, what? for an incompetent person, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'll remember that. <laughs> Yeah, because nothing becomes symbolic. It's not trying to prove anything. Mm -hmm. And it there's nothing to change the belief either. I mean, look at all the experiences that you had to trying to contradict the belief. And that didn't work because it structurally can't work. And one of the reasons, this is not the same as let's say you, you live in Omaha and you know you live in Omaha because you do. Mm -hmm. Objective reality to that. And if you move, you will no longer think you live in Omaha. You, you think you live in wherever the new place is. There's nothing to define a human being. So there's no way to change the belief because the belief is not based in evidence. And there's no evidence that can change it. It's somehow a conclusion that you came to in your life. It's mm. And we don't even need, need to know where you picked it up. The point is that you agreed with it. You believed it. Mm. Now, you have to understand, everybody, everybody, in different ways in their life, has been incompetent. So competence or lack of competence is not a measurement of anything right. in particular. But you made it a measurement of something. So that's why it then becomes so important to you. Mm. It has been. Mm. Um, I, I suspect we're through. I mean, how are you feeling and what's going on? I feel good. This is great. I've been... Uh, uh... When you look at your life, how does it feel in relationship to before 
I'm going to give you before and maybe an after. Okay. And before was you're doing one thing, thinking you should be doing the other thing. Mm -hmm. You get to a certain point and the pressure to go on stops you from going on because you think that it will symbolically say something about you mm -hmm. that you don't want to know. That's been in play in your life up to today. And what we're, we're working toward is to see that clearly enough that it's no longer in play. And that you can look at your life from the standpoint of what do you want? What do you want in different dimensions? Where are you now mm -hmm. in relationship to those various things? And how do you move from here to there effectively uh, if you can there's no guarantee but that's a different orientation and that's also a different structure right so if you look at your life from this point on does it look different than the pattern that you had Well, certainly the potential is there. Um, this, you know, because the idea that I would be able to now move forward without this um, hmm. thing holding me back, hmm. um, messing things up, stopping me from going forward, uh, it's incredibly liberating to think that. Yes. And, and, and I have to thank you because I have been co very competent in my life and I've been given many jobs and done many things because of my competency. So the yeah. irony is, uh, is kind of rich. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it though? So. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, um, but it sort of almost begs the question, did I overcompensate? then no. to prove competency or what no, you know is that no of course you didn't you were you were good at your jobs you had sufficient adequate competency to to do mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and sometimes maybe even more than that but it's not a symbol of right. anything and if it took Whatever amount of action it took or strategy it took, you would have done it because that's what it took to get it done. Do you feel, here's some of the things you feel at this point. You did say liberated. Do you feel free? Yeah. Do you feel a bit like a weight's been lifted off your shoulders? Uh, indeed, yes. Almost like the burden is no longer there. Yes. Okay. And maybe a little disoriented. <laughs> Happily disoriented. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of course your your mind wants to feel comfortable with the whole strategy. And this is new ground. This is new right. territory that you don't know what's going to happen. It's a different day. And that's great, though. Well, there's been a lot of mental effort. I mean, I can call up how many, you know, how many parts of my day were invested in yeah. trying to push myself out of that uh, incompetent idea. Yeah took a lot of time and energy. Do you know, structure is amazing. Uh, isn't it? I mean, here you've gone your whole life in a certain structure right. and it gives rise to certain patterns of behavior. Right. And we've only talked for a le little less than an hour. A little less than an hour. And by understanding what the components are, the elements are in the mm -hmm. structure and by understanding their place in the structure 
enabled you to see what you act and no longer compensate for it mm. and just have it be there. Okay, well, that's what you think. Okay. In the meantime, there's things you want and reality is what it is. And that change of underlying structure really does liberate you, frees mm. you to begin to live the life or at least organize your life around those things that most matter to you. Mm. Yes, I can see that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm always so amazed at it. Even though I discovered it, <laughs> I'm, it, it never ceases to completely knock me out. Yeah. And particularly when you see, and we've done now, I, we've done over 20 of these sessions, mm. and how often the end of the session in a relatively short period of time, the person's life is now possible, the possibilities of their life completely different. I mean, wow. And this is not psychology, it really is structural dynamics. Psychology mm -hmm. is a totally different thing. Mm. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so do you feel like you have creative block? <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll never use that word again. Good. I, I don't believe in it, by the <laughs> yeah. way. I, I actually yeah. don't believe in creative yeah. block at all. Um, but I understand that people can use that term to describe something they don't quite know how to pinpoint. Right. Catch-all phrase. And, and it does become kind of popular in the, oh, I can't do it because I've created a block. Mm -hmm. Well, that explains it then. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> Just get rid of those demons inside. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Anything you want to thank say? I, I would like you to describe, if you could, what it was like for you to go through this session with me, because people watching this will want to know. From your point of view, what was it like? Uh, it was very comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I felt uh, at ease. I, you put me at ease. Um, I didn't feel put on the spot. Um, I was concerned about that. Um, I felt uh, very listened to, and um, I felt I I feel very, um, for lack of a better word, helped. Or you know, it's um, mm -hmm. it's really clarified. It's brought a lot of clarity. Mm -hmm. It's just like putting on a different pair of glasses. What, what were some of the moments of insight that happened for you? Well, I, I appreciate that you were able to identify the element of, of incompetency. It probably would have taken me a, a long time to kind of get to that. Um, when you're so, in a structure, when you're mm -hmm. in a structure, it's very hard to see the structure you're in. So and for so you, these are these are the kinds of things that are very difficult to do on your own. Okay, well that, and that, and and you know I've read your work and and it, you know this has always sort of been like, well, when do I get to figure out what the, <laughs> you know? So this has been, you know, I'm deeply grateful for it. But that was that was very important for you to be able to tell, you know, give me the words, um, and then to find these examples in my life. Um, it was also helpful for me to say the words, I am incompetent and realize how quickly there wasn't anything in my physiology that believed that. Mm. It just, I, there was nothing in my body that took it in, just like water off a stone. Mm. Um, and, I like to be, I like the question about where I would go from here, what it feels like to, you know, now go toddling off to my job and realize that this is not hanging over my uh, head necessarily, or if it's there, maybe it's just noticing that it's there and that it has nothing to do with whatever work I produce Yeah. Um, in a job or in my own creative uh, Endeavors. Yeah, that's great. Um, and it was nice to be able to share about the poetry too. Found you to be an easy client because you're intellectually honest. And I understand that when the 
concept is trying to survive. Yes. It, it does muddle the mind a little bit, but you stayed with that. And I appreciated that quite mm -hmm. a bit. And it made it easy to do the session with you. Well, that's nice. I was really, I am really ready for this to leave. Hmm. So Great. thank you. Yeah. All right. One, one last thing. It's yeah. so nice to be able to put this in your hands because you are a creator. And now you're, yeah. you have the right structure to maximize your creative process. Yeah. And I feel that, I, yeah. that I really do feel that. So That's thank great. you for articulating that. Thank okay. you. So I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to say goodbye to you after I stop. Okay.